Good morning. <laughs> On this episode number four of Get in the Lab, we're gonna talk about chronic pain. So let's get in the lab. So my story with chronic pain kind of dates back to 2010. <laughs> now I can't even remember. I was just starting this new job in the county for the county of Riverside. And it was a normal day. It was a normal day like any other. However, I have to say that normal, it wasn't normal. I was waking up at 3 to 4 a.m. here in Yorba Linda so that I could leave the house at 5 a.m because I worked in India, which is about 30 minutes past Palm Springs. And I was going to get a cup of coffee like usual. And I was in a weird position before I went to go sit down at my desk to start my day. And I didn't want to drop my coffee cup because it was filled to the brim of delicious black coffee, but I had to sneeze. I sneezed if I didn't want to put my cup down. And that was just the last straw that broke my little camel back. And before then, I had been doing a lot of rough and tumble sports. You know, martial arts, a lot of martial arts, a lot of volleyball, just a lot of, you know, a lot of rough and tumble stuff. And you would think that, what, a sneeze? A sneeze? A sneeze, that's crazy. Did you know that sneezes travel like 100 miles an hour? Yeah, that's like going through your body. So when you're in the wrong position and you've put your body through a lot of rough and tumble stuff, then it makes sense, it makes sense. And I was commuting to a job, right? So I'd been very active up until this point and now I was sitting in the, in the car for about three hours a day. So that happened. Something snaps, explodes, something. Basically I herniated a disc and everything was just, or it felt like a knife inserted into your nerves of your spinal cord to where any movement that you make it hurts. And if you were to sit or pinch this nerve, you know, it, it'd be like somebody just going like that on the knife, you know, in, in your back. And that's what it felt like. So I, you know, at the time you're on probation, you just got a new job. You can't, you can't call out. You're going to lose your spot, right? So I went anyway. And, and that drive and just going anyway and just dealing with it um, and just sucking it up really just made it worse. You know, it, it felt like you just kept re-injuring it over and over and over again. So years go on and finally it's about 2012 and um, there's so many things that you believe yourself to be um, unable to do um, and you can't because your body doesn't listen. And there's so many just normal tasks like doing your laundry or cleaning your house or putting away the dishes in your dishwasher that become uh, a, a source of irritation and a source of anger because you can't do it. You can't do it. And that is what chronic pain is when you're dealing with that. And that does something to you emotionally, spiritually even, uh, you know, obviously physically, but the emotional side effect and spiritual side effect of not being able to do what you used to do, right? Um, and I'm not trying to highlight that, uh, that <laughs> my predicament was the worst ever. Obviously there are people that lose limbs, there are people that lose eyesight, all kinds of things, right? But I'm just telling you the experience of somebody who's dealing with a chronic pain issue. This is what it feels like. However, there is a bright side to this, and that is that if I did not feel the pain, the physical, emotional, spiritual pain of my back, I do not think that I would have paid attention and gave thought to even transferring from working in Palm Springs. Okay, so this set me on a path of, hey, if I transfer, I don't have to drive so long. Great, let's transfer to a closer office. I wanted Corona, I got Riverside, a 30 minute drive. Perfect, okay, I'll take it. I got it, I got the transfer. I moved from my hazmat specialist job to a, spe uh, it was called, what is it, special projects job. And it was great because now I was training other hazmat specialists who were coming into the program, as well as doing stuff like designing, designing programs, designing pamphlets, designing, 
logos even. I even designed this logo that went on a wine glass that later was used in some sort of event, which was pretty cool. And that is where I started to learn how to use Photoshop, which I still use those skills today, so that's pretty cool. And more importantly, I would have not met the people in special projects, namely um, Bob Hunt. Bob Hunt. And Bob turned me on to a couple of resources for my back and, and what to do while I'm sitting there at work because he's dealing with a back issue as well. And then he tells me about this author named Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss. And the name back then, I still remember what that felt like because we were sitting side by side in our cubicle saying to ourselves, oh my God, I'm so bored. It's only, it's only 3.30. When is it 5.30? You know, typical cubicle talk. I investigate this guy further and he's got another book out first, right? It was called Four Hour Work Week. And then you know what happened? I said, hey, Bob, did you know that Tim Ferriss wrote this other book? Have you read that? He's like, no, nah, I haven't read that, but I heard it's really good. <laughs> I check out Four Hour Work Week and I can't put it down. I can't put it down. It's amazingly inspiring and angering all at the same time. <laughs> I figure out that I've been duped. I've been uh, bamboozled. And this book is telling me that, that my creative mind and the, and the feeling that I've been feeling for my entire life, which is how come I have not been passionate about anything that I'm doing in my life? What's wrong with me? Am I going to die early because I don't have a passion? I would think this often. And I was just pouring through it. And like two days later, I come back to Bob and I said, Bob, I think I want to quit my job. He's like, what? Yeah, man, I, you, this book, man, this book. That is how it happened. And I would not have been able to, I feel, I would not be able to come to that point in my life if I had not been allowed to suffer, you know? And so, I didn't realize this at the time. At that time, that was 2012, I did not realize that my back and all of this crap <laughs> and all the pain that I was feeling was connected. Um, that's the last thing that you wanna think about. You're just thinking about the pain. But guys, I'm here. I'm in little to low pain because I've learned how to manage this pain and accept it as a part of my life and accept it as not, oh, I'm a victim and I have chronic back pain. I say I have chronic back pain and it's opened up a whole other world for me that I would have never thought possible without that suffering. I would have never appreciated it without that suffering. So without injuring my back the way that I did, I would not be as motivated to tell Kevin, I don't wanna shoot for you anymore. <laughs> I don't want to shoot for you anymore. I want to do my own thing. I would not, without, without injuring my back, I would have not been able to discover climbing. And climbing is fantastic. <laughs> it's just you and the wall. And it's just a mirror of life and of business. And I would not have been able to discover, <sighs> looking out this view that we have at our home and looking down at the traffic every day on the 91 freeway and saying, my God, I used to drive that. Look at all the people who are still driving it. And you know, they may be loving their job, but I didn't. And without the trigger, the signal, which is the pain, right? Pain is a signal for you. Without that signal, kind of just achy, like just, you know, attacking you day in, day out, you're not, going to be able to put yourself in a position to change your life. So what I'm saying, guys, is that chronic pain, acute pain, pain in general, that is a signal. It's biofeedback. It's telling you you need to, to change something. In the most obvious way, you're going, ouch, that's hot, right? But if you're dealing with chronic pain, maybe it's chronic back pain, you need to learn how to fix yourself. I cannot attribute my healing to any doctor, any chiropractic, or any medicine, or any pill. I attribute it to my experimentation of my own body and what I could handle and learning how everything works together with my back. And not just treating, oh, 
it's that L5, L4 disc herniation. No, it's everything. It's everything that's connected to it. It's your butt, it's your hands, it's your quads, it's your knees, it's the way that you bend. It's all of these things that are connected. It's your mentality and how you speak to yourself when you are hurting, right? And how you speak to others when you're hurting. With pain, guys, I know some of you lab rats out there are dealing with some chronic pain issues. It is in your best interest to see it not just as pain, but as a signal. A signal for you to change your life. Okay, and that, that was a big wake up call for me. And, and that's just something that I wanna share with you guys because I think that's, it's pretty damn significant when you wake up to it. Because now when you get injured or you go through some crap emotionally or whatever, um, it's now your turn to pay attention. And you can't blame the drive. You can't blame the job. You can't blame the sports that you played. It's not about that. It's about what are you going to do now to make your life better? What can you control? You can always control how you perceive the issue, the problem, how you, how you react to it, and what you're gonna do about it, right? No, I'm not pain-free, but I'm able to do the things that I love and I'm able to focus on certain things like running a business and, and still being active, still doing sports, not the same sports. No, I can't kick anymore. <laughs> but I could still do something, right? And that's what I focus on. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, uh, Chronic Pain for Getting the Lab. I really appreciate the, the feedback that we got for, or that I got for um, uh, episode number three last week. And as I'm running low on battery <laughs> on my DSLR, I just really want to say thank you. Um, in the last two weeks, we've done something crazy. And if you've been following my vlogs, then you'll know that I've been on a very up and down roller coaster. And to be here with you guys right now, to be shooting in the park on a very beautiful day with park, on a very beautiful day with no wind. Thank God, no wind. Park on a very beautiful day with no wind. Thank God, no wind. As I look back at what we've done together, whether you were here with me or not, um, I, I just have to say thank you. And my mom has instilled in me to give love to everyone. And yesterday, I did just that. I said, <laughs> I smiled and I said hello to my enemy, which were these two barking dogs. I'm, and I learned their names. And I was, uh, I learned their names and I, I was able to say hello and be at peace with my so-called enemy. And I think that's something, a big lesson for me in growing up, to love your enemy. Um, we're just people, <laughs> just people, we're just things, we're just animals. And I'm grateful for you for being here. Cause I think in some way I wouldn't be here without you. So that was it guys, that was uh, episode number four. Please let me know what your thoughts are. If you are dealing with a chronic pain issue, how you uh, uh, accepted it into your life and how you made your life better. If you're going through it right now, I want you to also leave a comment in here and be like, I feel you, I dig it, I dig the message and I'm gonna try. Uh, and I'm gonna try to change my life and I'm gonna try to understand how to manage it and uh, change my life and, and pay attention to the science. That's a lot, sorry. <laughs> um, but let me know. And uh, thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you next time here in the lab. Peace.